Hi, my name is Daniel Casey. And in a previous video, I have shown how to import some of the uh, files, some of your raw data files into Darktable. In this particular video, we want to explore how to process an image. And the objective here is really not to see all of the different uh, modules that are available in Darktable to process an image, but really to do a quick and dirty process uh, with just a few modules that I think are really going to be helpful for you guys to, um, uh, to process some image quickly. So that's the objective. So let's click, uh, before we click on the image, let's review a little bit of the panel here, what we're seeing. Uh, we have our film roll, which is basically some of our folders where we have some image. We have here the import button, which we've described previously. Uh, on this side, we have different options, but Darktable is really divided into two main components, one of which is Lighttable and the other one is Darkroom. There are other parts of uh, Darktable, which I will not describe, but there's many videos on YouTube on this. Uh, you can basically work with maps and georeference some of your uh, some of your image. You can have a slideshow. You can do some feathering, all kinds of different things like that. So in right now we're in light table where we're viewing most of our image, and in this case we only have two. We can also rate some of these image by giving them a number of star, for instance. So for this particular image, uh, I could give it a three star, four star, for instance. I can also rate image by color. So if I click on this image and I give it sort of a blue designation, so you see the blue designation here, and then you can search on some image by either star, by colors, or what have you. On the bottom here, we have sort of all of the image that would be in, in your this plain view, but you can also view image separately or individually by clicking on this uh, icon here. And you can view the image going down or going up the, and sequentially you would see some of your image. If you want to get out of that component, uh, you basically press escape. So if we want to process in an image, let's say that we want to process this image. You, there's, you can either uh, press D for dark table. And if you're in the dark table and you want to come back to the light table, you can just press the um, just press L, or you can double click on the image to process it. So in this particular case, we're going to double click on the image. So we're going to make sure that the image is original as to how I had it uh, from the camera. So if you have any changes on the image, you can you you can preset that. Uh, and in, in this case, we're just going to see if it's uh, it's it's right as we would have seen it from the camera. So that's how we would have seen it from the camera. So there was a little bit of of editing on this image, and I just remove all of the edited that I editing that I had done. So the first thing that I generally do uh, out of uh, an image is we look at the exposure. So in this particular case, when it's brought from the camera. Uh, in, into the into dark table, basically the image would give you uh, a, a plus 0 0.5 EV. So in this particular case, we may want to sort of lower that a little bit, and we'll come back to it afterwards. If we need to increase the exposure, you can always do that towards the end. So the first module that I would use is the, is the exposure module. The next one would be the color calibration module. The color calibration module is really where you would basically set sort of the tone, the white uh, of your image or the cast of your image. So if we click on um, the color calibration model, here we have, we, it's generally done in the, in the, in the cat um, tab here. One way to set up some of the white points is to basically look at some of the white point if you have some of your image by using this color picker here. So in this particular instance, I can basically here where, where I do have a little bit of white and look at what the RGB values are for this particular area. And as you can see here, it's pretty close to being even numbers. So I would say that the, um, uh, the, the, the white of my image uh, is, is pretty good. So we're gonna leave it at that. So if you would have needed to change that, 
basically we would have changed it right here from this uh, from this tab here. So you would just move this tab slightly. And uh, here I was 39 something, now I'm 41 something. So I changed the, the color into a, into a, um, a redder cast just by a, a bit. So we're gonna just leave it there. So the, the color calibration module is done. The next module that I generally look at is the sharpen module. So we're gonna open that. And I usually like to sharpen my image a little bit. So I'm gonna just use this and it's 0.5. I'm going to bring it to 1.5. And the way that you can do this is you can right click on this little triangle here and enter a number like I've just done here. So 1.5. You can either move the slider with your mouse as well. And this applies for all of the sliders right click on it to provide a number or in this particular case if you want to really fine tune some of the numbers you can just use your mouse and move it in, in this way so here we'll just do three for instance or something close to three so that's for the sharpen uh, module now the next one that i'd like to uh, to use for this particular image is the crop i'd like to crop not necessarily keep the same image as i have now so the crop module is not in here. So you can search here for the crop module. So you just say crop, press enter, get the crop module. And here I'm gonna keep the original, the original image. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit. I'm gonna to try to get rid of some of that area here, which is slightly over, overexposed. And let's say we want to have something like this for an image. Once you're done, you just double click on it. Now, something that I've sort of mentioned in the uh, calibration mod in the color calibration module is that if you're not sure uh, about some of the white points or some of the reference, you can use this little, little light bulb here and press on this little light bulb, and this will give you basically an 80% gray area around and will give you a white frame for reference. So this is can be very useful sometimes when you're setting uh, different kinds of, of color because when you're looking at your image for a long time, sometimes you need some other colors for reference. So if I click back on that, and the other uh, thing that are of interest here is, did, do I have some blown out highlights or something like that, some you know uh, overexposed area? So if you click on this, you can see that I have a little bit of that happening here. So this is where your sensor basically was saturated. So basically you do not have any data or color data mostly to play with here. So that's the that's something that uh, that happens sometimes in that particular. So I click on this and the next one here is your highlights. So basically, if you look at this diagram here, the different uh, channels are shown in here. And this is what we call the parade uh, scope. And I'm gonna describe it a little bit here. And in the parade scope, you have this upper line here, which is 100% luminance. If you go beyond the 100% luminance, then you're gonna be clipping some of the, uh, the, uh, the channel into your, into your image. And this icon here will tell you about, about that. It'll tell you that it's happening or not. And in this particular case, I don't have any clipping. So we'll turn, we'll turn that off. So with the, uh, there's other uh, scope that you can look at here. That's the parade scope. You can also look at the vector scope, which is really the red, green, and blue channel. <coughs> Excuse me. This is like a color wheel. And there's also the histogram, which people are quite familiar with. So this is the highlight part of the, head, uh, of the histogram. And this is sort of the shadow part of the histogram. But personally, I like to work with this one, so we'll keep this one for now. So once we've done with this sharpened module, one of the most important module in the in dark table that really enhances some of your image is the filmic RGB. So let's open that module. And in this particular module, I am, I'm gonna use the scene tab and the look tab only. And for 90% of the photos, those are the only two tabs that I use. 
the values which we have here are pretty close to the values that you may end up with at the end. But you can basically set your uh, white relative exposure. And generally speaking, if you move this way a little bit, it brings a lot more dynamic range into your picture. And the same with the, with the black points. So let's select something in that range. And now for the low tab, uh, generally speaking, if you increase the latitude, it will move these two points further apart. And that generally is sort of your gray portion of the, uh, your, your mid-tone, so to speak. So if I move this a little bit like that, you see the two still points moving up. And the contrast slider is all about the slope. So it's going to increase the contrast of your image. So let's increase that to, let's say, 1.4. And that, I would say, would pretty much does it for the Filmic RGB. Now, the next module that I like to use is the uh, color balance RGB. The color balance RGB, there's a, only a few tabs that I generally use here. And I generally start with pretty standard value and then move from there. But in this case, we're just going to put the standard value. Let's say we put 10% for the global vari uh, vibrance. Uh, we do the chroma. This is the, the color increase, the color component. Again, let's do 10% for the chroma. Global saturation, 10%. But you can move the slider and see what the effects it has on your image and how to how is it proved or not. And for the perceptual brilliance grading, usually I, glue, I use the global tab as well. And in this particular case, it's basically, you know, as we move the slider up or down, it sort of increases the, uh, uh, the brightness of, of the image. I usually go between, you know, 5 and 10%, and that usually does a pretty good job. So if we wanted to look at the, the influence of any module, and in particular this one, we can just click here, and this is the with the module without the module. So you can see the impact of each and every module by clicking like that. So in this particular case, I would say my image is almost done, but there is this dark area of the image and there is sort of this bright area of the image that I'd like to change a little bit. And usually that is done very efficiently in the uh, tone equalizer module, this one here. Again, I use, I use pretty much the simple tab here. I do it simply, so you bring your, you, you turn it on, first of all, you bring your uh, mouse close to, to, to here, and then you, you decrease the area, oh, I'm increasing it down. So you decrease the, uh, the information that you have here, you white it up, you expose it a little bit more. So it's basically taking all some of the pixels that are in that sort of range and works on, on the pixel globally, but it's the, the, the EVs of these particular pixels that it works on. So if I come here, where basically it's a little slightly over, overexposed, then I would do the other, I would move my mouse the other way. So I would decrease it a little bit so, so that it sort of balance out a little bit. So having done that, I would say, the tonal equalizer sort of helped out balance some of the overexposed and underexposed sort of portion of the picture. Uh, if you're happy with what you have, then all you need to do is to basically go here and basically export your image into a, uh, a JPEG file. Generally speaking, here's my, uh, root, my, my directory that I uh, put my image in. I generally keep the same file name as the camera file. The only thing I need and the only thing I added here is a p-value at the end. So when I see the file name uh, with a p-value uh, as a JPEG file, I know that that's a process file in, in my in my particular case. So we press export, and it's going to output the JPEG file into that particular directory. And if you use sort of this quality at 95%, you'll have JPEG image that'll be in the range of, let's say, 8 to 10 megabyte, which is pretty large. 
but uh, these are easily uh, uploaded to Facebook or Instagram, and these uh, these images will be further compressed uh, by some of these uh, social media uh, software. The last thing that we can do here is just to check again if we have if we brought some of the uh, any of the channel up in the clipping area and by just clicking on this and in this particular case you can see just a little bit here but other than that there's no problem so i we i wouldn't even worry about it so that's it thanks for watching and hopefully this was useful